Hi, this is Ken Pyle with VOD TV. We're here at NAB. We're with uh, Darren from Adaptrum. We're in the Microsoft booth. And Adaptrum, you guys are doing some really interesting things here, using the broadcast spectrum for data transmission. Why don't you tell us a little bit about white spaces? Well, white spaces, it's a very exciting opportunity to put spectrum to use. Uh, in 2008, uh, Adaptrum uh, became very active in bringing technology to the table. Uh, policy is finally caught up. We have rules. So now we have a chance to put the spectrum to use. This spectrum's been sitting fallow here in Las Vegas forever, and today we put it to use by delivering eight megabits of high definition video. And so what you're doing is you're taking a spectrum that uh, is not used. I mean, you know, we always had those channels uh, that you, right. you see on your TV that weren't there. You're right. using that spectrum. Why don't you tell us? How? So channel 36 is actually, there's a broadcaster using channel 36 today here in Las Vegas, and there's a broadcaster using channel 40. So channel 38 is actually sitting fallow. So our technology abides by very strict FCC rules to be able to use that spectrum and not cause any harmful interference to its neighbors. So we actually put it to use. And it's called cognizant radio, I think. And you yes. know, tell, tell us what makes these things smart. So cognitive radio has the capability to actually use channels and to be able to move and to also uh, use different power levels, different uh, different uh, modulation schemes. So it's really the next real 3G, 4G technology is what this cognitive radio is actually using. And uh, the important thing is, from an operator perspective, or really from anyone perspective, anyone's perspective, it's an unlicensed uh, type approach. Correct. So it's it's open. So any type of operator can use this spectrum. Whether you're an incumbent local service provider, a wireless internet service provider, a government entity, the Spectrum is fundamentally open to use. Now you have to use the database. Today we're using Microsoft's database to actually tell us what channel we can use based on the FCC rules, and we use that channel under the under the strict guidelines. And so, from a, um, a operator's perspective, do you see this as a way of maybe doing an alternative last mile? So, uh, Wi-Fi. If you think of how Wi-Fi was built out, people can buy devices, they can actually plug them in, and they can provide service. We think this is the next generation of Wi-Fi. Uh, only it goes farther and it has better technological characteristics. Wi-Fi has issues, it's a 10-year-old technology, does a great job for maybe two, three hundred feet, but now we're talking about going two to three miles. It, because it is using the lower frequencies, the VHF it is, it is. frequencies, and it's VHF. Also, and it's also using, it can use UHF or VHF, it can use high power spectrum, it can use unlicensed 902 to 928, so it really enables the use of any available spectrum that operators get their hands on. But especially as you get outside the urban areas, there's an abundance of white space spectrum. So as you get outside of mm -hmm. major metros, spectrum should no longer become a barrier to entry into the market to serve customers. Well, and you were suggesting that uh, even the licensed 700 megahertz spectrum could be used, uh, this technology could be used yeah, the way we envision this technology being deployed, uh, if you think about high power spectrum, that might be used to be able to get wide area coverage. So if you can get 700 megahertz high power spectrum, you could build out coverage, but you're limited in the channel sizes. Some of those are only 6 megahertz or 10. But where you have a lot of uh, capacity needs, where there's a great demand, you may have four to eight channels of white space, so you'll build out very small cells to really take care of that demand. And it can be point to point or omni uh, multi. -point Correct. To point -point. So it can be it can be point to point, point to multi point, uh, exactly. So it depends on the operator what they want to deploy. You know, we see in this country demand is exponentially growing, and supply is somewhat leveled off. This spectrum will open up opportunities for any type of operator to go out and serve that growing demand. And we're looking here at, at you know uh, full high definition, uh, 12 megabits. You said channel going through a building. Uh, from yeah. So the other. so what we're doing here today, we're connecting through an Xbox Live. Uh, to a base station within the convention center. Now this convention center is a very tough RF environment because it is really all metal. Right. And if you think about all the wireless communications that's going on here today, it's amazing that we're able to actually even get a link. Uh, we also have links, we've set up links outside. We have a base station at the top of the Wynn Casino. Okay. We have a base station at the top of the Hilton. So we're setting up broadband links outside and going great distances. So from the Wynn, it's almost 0.8 miles. You know, we're delivering internet broadband to the convention center to ourselves. Super, that's one way to get around the high cost of, from the hotel. <laughs> uh, so the big question though, speaking of costs, yes. uh, where is this on the cost curve? Great question. So like any new technology, 
technology. Uh, initial technology usually costs more. Uh, when Wi-Fi first came out, the boxes were even four times bigger than this, and the cost was great. And look at Wi-Fi today. So that took almost 10 years. We expect this process to take a third of the time that Wi-Fi took and a, a great one-tenth or even one-hundredth the cost of what it took Wi-Fi. So we expect to have product out next year, 2012. Okay. We'll actually be manufacturing this product today because there are situations where uh, no other technologies can go through trees and through are uh, areas. Okay. And the, even though it's a little higher cost because it's a bigger yeah, box, there's still a app. business yeah, case yeah, for sure. it. So we'll be manufacturing this box, and then we'll be getting into volume production and chipsets. And Super. within the next few years, you know, hopefully you'll see this in your phone. Super. Well, uh, Darren, appreciate your time. Thanks for stopping Thanks. by the booth. Thank you. Appreciate it.